Crossroads Media. This organization is a flat out embarrassment. And as the days go by, they somehow piss me off more than they did before. And I didn't think that was humanly possible. I thought we honestly already hit that point where they are an abysmal piece of shit. And yet somehow they're getting worse as the days go on. There's so much to attack here. You got the Shams report. Then you got the Shams audio from when he did a hit on ESPN. Nick Nurse has no clue that the Sixers were even fined or he was lying and he damn sure did know. But the whole situation publicly is a nightmare. This blows. This blows. They actually had a chance, potentially, to grab us back. Meaning, when they signed Paul George, some of us dipped our toes back into the water. Now, probably because we had no other choice. But you bring in someone like Paul George. After Joel Embiid on a national stage stared at him and did a little wink, wink, nod, nod, come on over to Philadelphia. And how does Joel Embiid reward that man? By going to the Olympics, knowing that he was banged up, not putting the best interest in the Sixers, who's paying him a boatload of cash, and essentially flipping Paul George the double bird, flipping the Sixers fans the double bird, and it's really disappointing. Extremely disappointing. They had a chance to potentially swing us, and all they needed to do was make sure Joel Embiid was prepared for day one. So whether that falls on the Sixers organization, whether that falls on Joel Embiid himself, obviously it's a mix between both. But we should never be in the position we are in right now. And it's getting uglier as the minute moves forward. And that's nearly impossible considering how ugly it is. Yo, they just lost to the Pistons and it wasn't even competitive. Like, They just got beat up by Tobias Harris and the Pistons, and they are down by double digits in the fourth quarter. Tobias got booed, but in reality, the Sixers should have been insanely crucified by every fan that decided to go to that game. And look, I don't blame some of them because for a little bit of time, there was some optimism that that would be the game where Joel Embiid makes his return. Of course, that wasn't the case. And allegedly, we will get some sort of update on Friday on where the two stand. But it's really not about that. It's about the principle at this point. It's about, you know, just the thought of ever putting the fans in the situation that they put them in. Shame on you. Shame on you. That is kicking people in the testicles, pointing right at their face and laughing. Evil laughing. And maybe even spitting on them too while they're down and out. While the testicles feel like they're sitting in your stomach and you can't move due to the sharp pain. That's what Joshua Harris did. That's what Joel Embiid did. And I'm starting to get really flustered with Joel himself. Because you got to know better. Look, there's a lot of players who played in the Olympics who are good to go and working out very well in the beginning stages of this season. LeBron James, there's there's guys that play in the Olympics and are good. Hey, most of them. So just from a very simple view, I don't have an issue if one of my stars wants to compete in the Olympics and be around those type of winning guys, be around people who have lifted the Larry O'Brien trophy and winners in their respected sport. I think that that could be a good thing. What you need to do, though, is weigh where you are physically, weigh what this means for your offseason, and when you go through a meniscus injury, you get surgery, you come back as quickly as you can to make a postseason run for the Sixers. 
You get an extension, all this stuff happens in the offseason, which doesn't happen overnight. I think it was pretty apparent that he was going to get that money. So that was on his radar, regardless on if it happened before, after, whenever it went down, that was already properly discussed that we're going to get you that cash, right? So knowing where your body was physically, to then take a calculated risk to play in the Olympics anyway, That's where it doesn't sit right with me because it seems like he thought that was more important than his body being available for his team. It's not more important. If it's in addition to, fine. But the number one priority has to be the 76ers, the team that is willing to cut you that check. And if you're going to do something that will destroy your readiness and your availability, that can't happen. So knowing where he was from a physical standpoint, the fact that he still made the decision to go out there and put himself in harm's way when he wasn't really supposed to be doing that right then and there, that's where I'm more aggravated about it. And yeah, I'm starting to change my tone on the Olympics thing more and more. I'm starting to to actually despise it way more than I did maybe a few weeks ago or at the time of it. Um, Because this is totally unacceptable. Totally, totally unacceptable. And here is an update. I want to read for you. When the whole fines went down, what was going on in my brain? So on October 29th, as it's Halloween, happy Halloween, everybody. Shams tweeted out, the NBA has fined the Philadelphia 76ers $100,000 for public statements around the health status of all NBA center Joel Embiid, sources tell ESPN. Then he quote tweets that tweet and says, sources said the NBA's investigation showed that the Sixers did not violate player participation policy with Embiid's missed game, but in fact, with the public comments that did not properly reflect his health issues with his knee. Indicating that it wasn't as if the Sixers lied He's not playing for a reason because there was speculation that they strictly are arresting him and he is good to go. He does have the two thumbs up from the medical staff, but they are holding him back because they want him well rested and not beat up for games that they don't value in October and November early in the 82 game schedule. Well, comes out that (laughs) there's a problem, there's a knee issue, and they are still going through that process with him on a physical note. But here's the kicker. That same day, Shams did a hit on SportsCenter. Take a listen to what he had to say on the same day. Here it is. Some light at the end of the tunnel. He has participated in multiple five-on-five scrimmages in recent days, including today. So that is tangible progress moving forward for Joel Embiid. We're still not sure when exactly he'll be back, but he is practicing to the extent of five-on-five scrimmaging. Now, here's what bothers me about this. Oh, hold on. Supposed to be up by now. Did a damn good job. Oh, did I do a damn good job getting up nice and early. Um... What I'm reading is, and and look, I'm just speculating, but I know how some of this stuff goes. I believe that Shams was given the information by the Sixers that they were fined. You can report this. Breaking news. Sixers star center, blah, 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 blah. Sixers fine, blah, 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 blah. But what you then need to do is go on SportsCenter and, and tell the world that this thing is trending in the right direction. That he is now scrimmaging because just days ago, Nick Nurse said, I had no idea. Uh, Excuse me, not that he had no idea. Um, Something just popped up on my screen. That he had no idea about the fine. But Nick Nurse was saying that he's not doing any scrimmaging yet. He's not doing five-on-five stuff yet. So the same day that it pops up, he actually isn't injured. Or Sorry, damn it! Damn it! This team is pissing me off! Let me hit the reset. Boop. Okay. The same day that Shams brings up that there actually is an injury with him, 
is the same day that, hey, look, everybody, look over here. It is trending in the right direction, and he finally is taking the basketball and at least practicing with his team's scrimmages. He's with his team's practices. Something doesn't add up for me. That smells fishy. It smells to me that Shams was given X, Y, and Z to report as long as he gave X, Y, and Z to report. And I don't know to what extent five-on-five means.